Hey, there's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. And if you're wondering why I have these two machines here, you'll have to go back and watch the previous video and get caught up to speed on that. Walker T27i and the Xmark Navigator. I'm looking to purchase one of these machines for my own personal use. Again, go back and watch the previous video to get caught up on all that. Today, I'm gonna to go over strictly striping capabilities, which is incredibly unique on both of these machines. It doesn't produce a solid line stripe like you're used to seeing in my yard. You're used to seeing me use my right walk behind mower, which is painted black. It's a right walk behind. A lot of people ask me about that. And you're used to seeing me use my big league lawn roller. I'll link those up in the description below. You can check them out if you want to. But these machines do not require a striping roller, okay? The vacuum of the deck, the cut quality it produces, and the tires on the side and the rear actually produce the stripe. So it produces a very unique stripe that doesn't look the same as the, you know, the, the, the solid line stripe. Some people like it, some people don't. I actually kind of like it. I think it's a cool, unique look to a yard. And today we're gonna see side by side which one actually stripes the best. Something else we're gonna do is look at cut quality. Both of these machines are known for cut quality and vacuum capabilities. So we're gonna go over all that uh, front yard. We're gonna do head to head striping action. And of course I'm gonna mow the backyard as well and probably do a, a, an additional video in the bluegrass about mowing short and how they stripe. Uh, around my yard I have turf type tall fescue, a little touch of blue and a little touch of rye mixed in. Makes for a great color yard, super thick and dense, and it stripes like crazy. I've been mowing it all year with my right walk behind, and you can see I've got my checkerboard stripe pattern going on right now. So we're gonna cut a totally and completely new pattern in the yard, virgin cut. Be the first time I've mowed this pattern in the yard with these mowers. So it should give us a real good look at how hard or how good they actually stripe. Tell you what let's do, let's do it this way to make it as fair as possible. We'll mow six passes with one mower, then another six passes with another mower, another six passes with the other mower, and then go back and finish out with the uh, second mower. And we do have that big ball of goodness pretty much in the right location. Ideal would be here, but it's right there. So we're still gonna get some really good striping effect out of this. I just think that's the fairest way to do it, is to mow section with one mower, right beside it another, go back to the first mower, and then finish out with a second mower. Both machines I've cleaned under the deck thoroughly. This machine has 34 hours on it, it's a demo unit. Uh, the Walker has zero hours on it, it's never been used. It is a demo unit though. Uh, but both decks are nice and clean. Blades have been perfectly sharpened and balanced by reedgit.com. So we have a very even playing field right here. So let's get at it. So literally the first time I've ever been on a navigator, so if my lines are a little crooked, I apologize. It's been at least 10 years since I've operated a walker. So I've got my drone right here. And while I'm talking to you, kind of like in real time, let's hit the record button right here. And let's look at the stripes together. And we're gonna slide over here to the right side of the driveway. Those first six lines are X mark. Going left to right, well, excuse me, going right to left. Uh, the next six are walker. Then you go back to X mark, then you go back to walker, then you go back to X mark and walker. Those last two passes, I only had room to make four swipes a piece. But, uh, you know, looking at it with my eyes from the ground view, and then also looking at it with you, the drone view, 
you'll have to tell me i don't really see a difference in the striping capability uh honestly i don't i just when you're panning back and forth going left to right i mean it just doesn't look any different we go up in the air right here and let's get a little further back but look at that you can still see those big league lawn roller and that right stripe can't you <laughs> those angle stripes let's swing around to the left just a little bit right here and again you're looking at the stripes uh pointing uh directly to the road in front of the house and we'll swing back around to the right right here and i just can't see a difference i mean Call me crazy, whatever you want to call me. I just don't see a difference here. Let's go down low one last time. Let's get ground level with this thing. And let's go down to the ground. Don't hit the cryptom area. Let's pan up a little bit like this. Uh oh, I'm close to something. And let's go left to right, right here. And look at there. I just, gosh, I don't see a difference. They all look alike. Now you can see, let's find a good one right here I can show you. Let's pull up in the yard a little ways. See how it stripes? See how you got your two outer tire tracks and then you have that center wheel in the back? And that kind of gives it a unique look, a little bit different look. It's not a full stripe, fully condensed wide stripe. Like see, there's my old big league lawn stripe with my right. You can see that's a much more solid stripe right there. You're basically using the tire tracks with the Walker or the X mark to lay down the stripe. But uh, when you wipe out all those solid stripes and then the, the yard is cut with nothing but the walker or the X mark, it totally and completely gives it a unique look. And I like that look. I don't prefer it over the other look. I don't think it's better than the other look. I don't think you should go buy a walker or X mark because Pete likes that look. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying that. I just like the look leave it at that leave it plain and simple i like that look but i also like the other look that is why i'm going to keep my right walk behind with my big league lawn roller regardless if i buy either one of these machines so i have that option so you can see the condition of the backyard right now she is glowing like a new penny and we're going to go back here and do some cutting with it and then we'll close the video out and I'll show you some drone work of the whole yard and you'll you know, kind of see what the whole yard looks like. Now, just looking right here, I can see through the clear and it's not even close to being full. And I'm assuming the walker is the same way. Let's take a peek back here and see. Oh, wow. <laughs> So let's pop it up. You need to come see this right here. I want you to see the difference. All right, we'll come back here and you can kind of see how much was collected off that. Now, if you noticed in the flyover, I dropped the deck. I had them set at four inches. I dropped them down to three and a half because I wasn't even cutting any grass off the yard. Uh, I've been cutting my yard at three inches all spring. So it hadn't gotten high enough to cut it four inches yet. So I had to drop down to actually get some material off the yard. And here's the X mark. You see what I got? Notice this. See how the X mark, it's clogging up, right? Not necessarily clogging up, building up is a better word. And, and this door is supposed to seal this off right here. Well, if you have grass clippings getting in here, that breaks the seal, allowing for grass to escape. Obviously, it's just a little dust. I do want to point something out. That is something I noticed mowing with the X mark is I'm having grass clippings hit me on the neck. On the walker, on the other hand, not the first thing touch my body. But you can see the walker is building up just a little bit right through here. Not nearly as bad as the X mark. And I'm assuming that's probably from the vibration of the machine and the door vibrating just a little bit and the force 
coming out from the discharge chute is probably pushing the air against the door so the combination of the two allows for that to build up right in there just a little bit so i don't know over time will that wear out and become an issue uh, best thing i can remember with my walkers in the past we never really had an issue with that but with the x mark uh, i have no idea because never owned one But you can see, look how finely ground the X mark grinds that up right there. And then let's go over here to the walker and let's get some grass clippings and about the same, really no different. Grinds it up pretty good. Now let me say this, the reason I personally think, I don't, I don't know this for a fact, but I assume and I've been thinking this way, the reason the X mark is throwing grass over the top and getting down my neck and going down the back of my shirt is because there's nowhere for the grass, the pressure, I guess, for lack of better words, built up in the deck. There's nowhere to relieve the excess pressure. The only place it has is coming out of the back of the machine right there. Whereas the walker, has this little cutout right here and you see that's open to the deck and you can watch it literally watch it i used to remember that about my walkers mowing you can watch that little bit of excess clippings just kind of trail out right there and i think that's what relieves that pressure under the deck so that you don't get any blowback on your person and you can see back here the x mark here's kind of a breather shoot and then the same thing on the walker, it actually has a breather chute right there as well. So you will get material come out of there, the excess pressure from the, the vacuum of the machine pushing out and it will relieve right there. But with the X mark, I'm sitting in the seat and I'm getting those grass clippings on me. With the walker, I'm sitting in the seat, I'm not. Let's go in and get this out of the way because th this is part of what uh, is a determining factor for me to spend my 20 grand on because I did get the MSRP on this. It's like 20999 In the previous video, I said I didn't know, but I do know now. Matter of fact, let me pull that email up so that I am absolutely accurate with this information. $20,099. And I have not gotten an email back from Mr. Peeler yet on the walker, but uh, I have done some homework and I know they're at the $20,000 mark as well. Bye -bye. Love you. Love you. Be careful. If you need me, call me. I'll drop what I'm doing and come get you. Let me, let me brag on my daughter right quick. Uh, I love my daughter. I, I love her. I will protect her with my life. I will do anything and everything for her. Uh, of course, my other kids as well, my two boys. But, you know, dad and his daughter is a little bit different there. And um, I am so proud of her. I am absolutely so proud of her. She goes to school full time. She's a junior in high school. She uh, works, I'm not gonna call it a full-time job, but every single minute that she's not at school or at softball practice, she plays softball, she is working. Uh, Saturday, she pulls 12 and 16 hour days, okay? So why, why does she do that? Well, it's because that's what me and her mother taught her to do. We taught her to work hard for what you want. That's one of the reasons I'm able to buy a $20,000 mower because I personally have four companies that I run, a local company that has three divisions. I have two internet website-based companies, so it's actually five, to be honest with you. And we have instilled that work ethic into her. And I feel confident that when she leaves our nest or if she gets married or whatever, which that's a different story. We'll talk about that in another video, but 
when she leaves and she's on her own, I am confident my, my wife and I have produced a productive citizen of the United States. That is a big deal to not be lazy. You understand? Sorry to go off on a rant here, but she just, she is the textbook image of what I personally feel like to bring a child up, not only in the ways of the Lord, so they're old when they won't depart from that. She's very, very grounded in her faith and uh, very wise when it comes to that. But in culture, to produce a hard worker, to, it doesn't matter if, if you're a hard worker at a desk doing computer type work, or if you're outside using these things. The objective is to produce a contributor to society in some way and to produce a person that can provide for themselves right number one i don't want the government providing a dang thing for me i could care less what they do i'm going to provide myself i'm a big boy i want my kids to be the same way with that same mindset i don't want them looking for handouts i don't want them asking for free stuff i don't want them being given stuff without earning it period there's zero tolerance to that i will not accept anything less as their father so it's my job my wife's job to produce raise teach instruct discipline which is missing in parenthood these days from what i can see all that stuff into our children into our kids girl boy whatever yes girl or boy there's no middle ground on that it's a girl or a boy and send them out to the world so that they can make a living for their own be productive help society as a whole and sorry for the rant but i just she just reminded me of that right there she is an incredible girl and soon to be an incredible woman and she is a super hard worker i could not be more proud of her i am proud of my boys as well okay i'm super proud of my boys and maybe when they walk by and i'm filming they'll remind me of something and i'll tell you about them before we start mowing let me say this i want to make this clear that none of that stuff means anything about my daughter none of it unless she's brought up in the ways of the lord so she, when she's old she will not depart from it she has taught the gospel of Jesus Christ that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one's going to spend eternity with God unless it goes through him. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you don't teach your kids about the saving knowledge of Jesus and they spend eternity in hell separated from God, what's the point? What's the point if you die and you go to hell and spend eternity away from God? Leah is saved. She is born again through the blood of Jesus. Hands down, the most important thing to teach your children is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And obviously that is a personal decision on her part. She has to decide whether to follow Christ or not. She has made that decision. And to me as a dad, to a, to a daughter, I feel complete. I mean, there's really nothing else I can do but keep on teaching her life and things about Jesus and God's Word. And I'll even teach her how to run one of these mowers if she wants to learn. You know what I mean? So I saved a little bit of grass over here uncut. I'm gonna do a couple of little tests right quick. That's a chunk of pine needles from a bale that I had left over. We're gonna kind of do a little bit of a suction test right here, a cleanup test. And yes, to make things even uh, keel, I've dumped both hoppers. Uh, both decks are set at three inches, so it's all fair. I am going to try to put out the same amount 
of material in both strips right here. I'm going to try to spread it out as evenly as I can to make them match. This isn't quite as wide. Let's spread that out just a little bit. Alright, to the best of my ability, that is done as good as I can do it. Now, I'm going to go over here. These are the things that fall off my cryptomeria. I'm going to go over and get some. We'll come right here past the pine needles and lay those out. Let's see, that's four pieces on this side. And come over here, one. These are a little bit bigger, so let's break those in half. Three, four, and then five, six five six okay it's a pretty even keel right here let me give you a close-up so you can see that i'm not fudging in any way here's the walker lane and there's my cryptomeria branches or whatever you want to call them let's lay that right there to make that a little more even like the other side right there yeah that looks pretty even to me and then here's the pine needle side for the x mark so you can see pretty even even as i can get it all right i've got you exactly one stripe width away from the x mark pile then i'll move the camera and put you one stripe width away from the walker side and I've got a camera mounted on the mower, the deck of the mower, so they give you a little bird's eye view. Exactly one stripe width away adjust this give you a good view at it and we'll see what happens here So let's look at this up close. Let me get you off the tripod here and you can see the X mark left debris in the yard. Right there, right there. The pine needles sucked them up clean. You can see a little bit of the remnants in between the two stripe passes. But see this kind of stuff right here? It did not pick that up. You can see a little bit of stuff. Not much, a little bit. Come over here to the walker side. And you can see this little piece right here. This little piece right here. And there's your little piece right there. And that's about it. These little tiny pieces. And of course, the pine needles clean them up with no problem. I realize this isn't a you know, perfect way to test it but it's my way of testing it because it's the only way I have to test it and the X mark left more debris on the ground than the walker did. So it is what it is. Let me go dump both hoppers again to have a clean start with both and then we're going to mow a little bit in this corner over here with the back door open and see how it disperses the clippings. All right, so I'm gonna try to give you three different point of views right here. I've got the drone, which will be kind of 
looking at the rear. I've got the camera I'm talking to you on, which will be kind of a side shot. And then I've got a camera mounted in the back that you'll be able to see the material coming out. And you'll also be able to see the oscillating or pivoting action of the walker uh, through the discharge chute. And you'll be able to see the same thing on the Mark. Let's see if I can work three cameras at one time. try and give you one more angle right here a little bit lower with the camera with the sun in the background and maybe we can get a little bit better shot this time not that the other shots were bad I just want you to see this the best you can two uh, X mark stripes right here X mark passes and you can see how it does it just kind of scatters the grass out and I mean let's see a little bit of wind blowing so that's actually helping so that you can see it fluff up you can see how much it leaves there and then come right over here to the walker side and look at there no difference I honestly don't see a lot of difference in the way that performs between the two. Give me a second, let me pull the navigator up beside the walker. Somebody will say I left the walker parking in front of the navigator. And that might be an issue. Okay, dead even. Have I made my mind up already? No, I haven't. Uh, I've got a lot of cutting to do. Uh, I'm gonna do another video in the bluegrass back here and you'll get to see that where we're gonna take the turf down to inch or so. So uh, we're gonna get, get an idea of how it performs. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about these decks, <clears throat> they're a little bit unique in the way that they float. If you notice, there's a hinge right here a hinge right here and that allows the deck to kind of follow the contour of the ground you can see how this kind of oscillates a little bit right here uh, the x mark does have a spring system right there to kind of help with that flotation i assume and then you can see the walker right here does the same thing uh, kind of flotation uh, go with the contour of the ground which is a unique feature it really doesn't come into play in my yard because I graded my yard and my yard's pretty tight as far as the grade goes especially the bluegrass because uh, I've really got it tight it's been sand leveled cut sand compost leveled one time and so it's, it's a very smooth mow uh, <clears throat> is the three and a half inch max height of cut even though it says four inch a deterrent and 
going to make me not want either one of the mowers. Well, no, it's not. Uh, I can manage this fescue at two and a half inches all year long or four and a half inches all year long. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, but it won't deter me from wanting one of these mowers because the cut quality, uh, the vacuum capability, uh, the ability to ride instead of walk, and yeah, is what it is. You know, all those things outweigh that half inch of height capacity or height capability. It's just not going to make that much difference in my case in my yard. And again, I'm looking for a mower for me. I ain't looking for a mower for my business. We run right ZK. Haven't made up my mind if we're going to stick with ZKs when we sell those or if we're going to go with one of the other mowers that you saw in the top six. If you didn't see that, you need to go see it. I'm talking about that massive mower review series that I did uh, where we had 14 of the baddest made in America stand on mowers right here. It's a whole series of videos on my channel. Go check it out if you want to see my take on all that so let's talk about uh my likes and dislikes about the machines right quick um comfort hands down this walker is considerably more comfortable to operate sitting in the cockpit uh the seat holds my big butt better uh, i'm not kind of crunched down in there like I don't know, man. This thing's like riding a beanbag. No offense, X mark. It, it rides well, but it just doesn't fit my body. Okay, I'm a heavy dude. I, well, I used to weigh 250 pounds, but now I'm down to two and a quarter. Actually, I think I'm almost down to 220. Uh, I've been working out, been uh, eating right, and getting my health back in order. And um, you know, it, with all that, it just don't fit my butt right. It don't fit my body right. Now I did find in the previous video, you heard me talking about my knees being cocked up in the air. Well, this is a much more relaxed, much more comfortable position to mow in. And that's equal between the two mowers because I, I can stretch my legs out on that mower just as well as I can with this one. But this position for me and being crunched down in the mower, it's just, I don't know if the seat needs more cushioning in it or what. It needs more padding or maybe I need to lose a little bit more weight. I don't know. It's just not as comfortable as a mower as this walker is in my opinion the ride quality on both of them uh, dead equal i just don't see any difference in the way they ride across my yard and again my yard's not typical it's graded to near perfection i don't think anything's perfect but jesus and I, by all means my human imperfect self cannot get the grade perfect so i call it near perfection so it's very tight, very flat. Well, not flat, but graded correctly. And so there's no really humps and bumps to test the ride quality out. So both of them are pretty much equal in that aspect. The control layout, uh, in the, the first video, I think I said I preferred the X mark with the uh, blade clutch engage over here. I think that's what I said, don't hold me to that. But after operating the machines, this one definitely gets the control layout uh, winner for me. And here's why. So if, if I'm in drive mode and I'm in forward going, going straight, with the X mark, I have to switch hands and put my right hand on the controls and go left and pull up to engage the blades. With the walker, I'm going forward and I can actually take my hand off the speed control and just simply reach down and engage the blades. So after using the machines, uh, definitely the control layout, the walker wins. Uh, it's not even close because you know, having to do this every time you're gonna cut the blades on is, you know, it's not as good as doing this. You know what I mean? The vacuum capabilities, uh, as far as vacuuming the turf and mowing the grass and leaving the turf clean, they're they're even. I don't I don't see any difference in them. They both cut incredibly clean. 
Uh, they vacuum very, very well. And that was, again, one of my favorite things about the walker when we used to run them. In our little pickup test right here, uh, uh, I don't you call it what you want that I know that's not like a real good test to throw some pine needles and cryptomeria out and run over at one time but that's all I got to work with here and the walker gets a slight advantage you know it still left a little bit of debris down but not as much as the X mark uh, the way the things discharge grass out the back with the hopper door open uh, dead even really didn't see anything different with that uh, so you know there's no clear winner in my opinion cut quality meaning that tight look you know when you mow the turf and you kind of go out there and you sit on the porch and you just get that tight appearance to the turf grass and you know one thing it just agitates the snot out of me is after I mow my yard when you see that one grass blade or those two grass blades it's just sticking up after you just spent an hour mowing the grass and your blades are perfectly sharp, you've got a top of the line commercial mower. And I'm referring to my right because it does it from time to time. And you have that one little grass blade sticking up. It drives me just crazy. And what I do is I go out, I take my pocket knife and I nip that little blade of grass off because it just, I can't go to sleep at night knowing that blade of grass was sticking up. So that's a big deal to me, is cut quality. Uh, cut quality, I've gotta go even. I just do because I just cannot visually see a difference in the actual quality of cut I'm getting between both. If I had to give one a slight, I'm, I'm talking about, so it would be like a, 48% to 52% or maybe a 49% to 51% I'd probably go Walker because it just I don't know if that's me uh, fabricating something in my mind going back in time and just remembering how well the walkers cut and vacuum and clean and and the cut quality and I've never run this one before until today it, it could be some of that human error playing into fact uh, playing into this but if I had to give one a slight edge and I'm talking about the slightest edge it would probably be the walker as far as the quality of cut goes striping uh, I mean I just cannot see a difference in the way they stripe I really really don't uh, I mean, just looking at it right here, I can't tell you which mower mowed which stripe. I just, I can't. Uh, we'll test in the next video back there with the bluegrass on the lower height of cut, which one stripes better. But for the fescue, cut it, uh, what are we cutting at? Three inches right now? Cut it three inches, I just can't tell the difference. So which one am I gonna buy? Um, don't know. Uh, like I said in the first video, uh, when I do make my mind up and decide if I even go this route, uh, you know, that, that's still in my mind. $20,000 is a lot of money. I'd have to finance it and make payments on it. So I'm not sure I'm going to bite that bullet quite yet, uh, but I'll make my mind up before I go to each company. I will decide which one I want if I'm going to buy one, and I'll go to that company and say, hey, I got a YouTube channel, I can show you a mower, show everything about it, thousands of people will see it, people might buy it, and by the way, made in America, USA made right here, I am 100% over the top about American manufacturing, uh, supporting American families who work American jobs in these American manufacturing plants, 100% about it, so it's win-win as far as I'm concerned on that, that aspect. But I will go to the, the both companies and say, hey, I got a YouTube channel. Lots of people see it. It could create sales for you guys, which is a big deal for me that you sell the equipment that I show that's made in America. And will you, will you not, may, maybe not necessarily give me a mower, but will you let me get a mower on a super extended lease or, or, or demo or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what to call that stuff, but I will try that 
And if it don't work, then I will buy it. And if by chance X Mark says, sure, we'll send you a mower, keep it as long as you want to. And Walker says, nope, we're not going to do that. But I had already decided to buy the Walker. I won't take the free mower. I will buy the Walker with my money. Vice versa. If Walker says, sure, I'll send you more. No problem. You can keep it as long as you want to or you can have it, whatever. And Xmark says, no, we're not going to do that. But I decide I want the Xmark. I'm going to buy the Xmark anyway. I hope that makes sense. I'm not going after the free mower. I'm going after the mower I want. And then once I make that decision, if the company wants to work with me, I'll be more than glad to do that. So that's it. Uh, wow, these are fantastic machines. Oh, I almost forgot something. And this is a big deal to me. The hydraulics, the, the steering, hydraulic sensitivity, the response, the feel, all those things I went over in the uh, mower series review. Uh, oh, I love the hydraulics. The hydraulic subject, I just love. I can almost feel the hydraulic fluid running through my veins when I'm controlling levers in a motor grader, in a backhoe, a track hoe, or my tractor, or anything. I just, it's, I just love the hydraulics on the machine. And hands down, it's not even remotely close. The, the hydraulic system and the drive system on the Walker, in my humble opinion, it ain't even close. It's like uh, it's like riding in a Cadillac versus riding in a pick a different car that's less of quality. I don't know what car, <laughs> but the hydraulic system on this Walker, hands down, uh, better than the X Mark hydraulic system. Again, my opinion. My I know my opinion don't mean for much, but it's my opinion. And I, I really, really, really like the tightness of how this thing is just super tight in the hydraulics and very touchy feely. And I love that sensitivity in hydraulics. Uh, make note this machine does have 35.1 hours on it, this machine has 1.3 hours on it. Does 35 hours equal? hydraulics losing some of that tightness from the factory and sensitivity and feel and all that highly doubt it uh just being straight up with you 35 hours didn't even, it ain't even broke in yet so i highly doubt it i just think it's the way the thing's made i don't think the hydraulics are made as good as the hydraulics on the uh, walker and I, I need to bring this to note on the hydraulic system i, I i'm pretty sure this is accurate information if it's not, somebody comment and let me know below or just go to their website and research it for yourself. I'm pretty sure the hydraulic system on the Navigator is more of the same type of system of wheel motors like on a zero turn or a walk behind, whereas the Walker is more of an inline type hydro system, I think. Not 100% sure on that, I don't know. But I do know that they're, they're a different style of hydraulic system. Obviously, that plays into it, I reckon, because you know, the, the different style works better than this different style, in my opinion. And at the end of the day, I don't really care about the science behind all that. I don't really care about how it's made. I just, when my butt's sitting in this one, it feels better. It feels better to operate to me. That's all I really care about. So there you go, uh, two exceptional machines. Uh, uh, gives me a lot to think about, uh, a lot to think about. Uh, I gotta look at the price of them again and, and, and determine you know, which one, payment options, financing options, zero interest, all that kind of jazz. I gotta look into all that once I decide which one I want. Um, but right now, I'm gonna take my fescue down to two and a half and prep it for all the work tomorrow. We're gonna core aerate it uh, and then we're going to top dress it with my earthen turf uh, top dresser. So I'm going to show you that new piece of equipment. We'll use a stinger aerator on, on in some of the video to show you that plugger. Fantastic machine. And then I've got a very unique attachment from a tractor. We're going to verticut the bluegrass 
and I, that'll have its own video and I'll show you all about that. It's a absolutely amazing machine and it's a company that I've teamed up with uh, to work hand in hand with those guys to be able to show you a lot of athletic field sports turf equipment. So uh, if you're into that thing, you definitely want to subscribe. You don't want to miss that because it's, it's absolutely amazing what this specialized turf equipment can do. Golf courses, it'll fit right in line with you guys as well. So I'm gonna get to mowing. The sun's not quite down, but I think I can get this cut down to two and a half. And then we'll probably go ahead and start filming on the bluegrass back there. Might have to finish up tomorrow out there. So anyway, as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.